Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a nine patch octagon shape table topper that you can use in the center of your dining table, on an end table, or even in the bedroom on a chest of drawers or your dresser. It's one of those things you can make to kind of cover up the scratches so no one will know what kind of disaster is lying underneath. So let's take a look at what I'm going to make. It's called a nine patch because it has nine pieces of fabric, three in each row. And as I'm making this, you're going to hear me refer to A and B fabrics. This large flower print is my A fabric, and the lighter yellow fabric is the B fabric. Okay, let me set this aside. Now, we're going to go over the instructions really quick. If you have a cell phone, or if you don't, borrow somebody's cell phone, put this video on pause and take a quick, quick snapshot of the screen while it's on pause. This is page one, and then here is page two, and then one more, page three. Okay, now, I'm going to go to page one. I'm going to go over the cutting instructions. You will need nine squares, seven and a half inches total. Five of them will be of color A, four will be of color B. Then you will need two strips of binding, two and three quarter inches wide. Then you'll need a large square of fabric for the back that's 30 by 30 inches, and then a large square of cotton batting that is also 30 by 30 inches. This is the layout pattern for your fabric. A fabric, B fabric, A fabric, and so forth. So follow this pattern right there. So that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to lay out my squares. Here's my A fabric, B fabric, A. Then my next row I'm going to start with B, then A, then B, and then the last row is repeating row one, starting with A, B, and then A. Okay, now you need to sew each row separately together. So you're going to take these three squares, sew them together, set it aside, then take the next row, and then the next row. So take your A fabric, fold it into the B, where you have right sides together, pin it, and do a quarter inch seam allowance. Then unfold it, fold the next square of A over onto the B, line it up, pin and stitch a quarter of an inch. And remember, do this with all three rows. Okay, now the next thing that you're going to do is you need to press those rows in a specific pattern or a specific direction. So press your seams in the same direction. So let me flip it over. Here you go. I have them in the same direction. All right, I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to flip it back over to the front. You're going to take your A fabric, fold it into the B. Okay. Then we're going to do something called setting the seam. When you're stitching these squares together, sometimes it puckers a little bit. So you need to press that flat. So that's why we call setting the seam. And just take a steam iron and give it a burst of steam to press it. Then, and by the way, this is not a hot iron. Don't ever press on top of your cutting mat. Not a good idea. Then unfold it, but keep this piece lifted so that the raw edge goes out away from you and then gently press against, don't stretch, and give it a burst of steam. And then do the same thing with the next square. Press it flat, lift it up a little bit, keep it slightly lifted, and then give it a burst of steam press. Okay? All right, so now you want to take all your rows, lie them wrong side up, wrong side up, and you will see that all my seams are in the same 
direction. Now you're going to take the center row and flip it to where your seams are now lined up here. See your stitches right here? Okay, you want it lined up like that. Now I'm going to show you how to do what we call locking the seams. All right. So you want them face up. You're going to take one of your outer rows and lay it on top of the center row. And you want to make sure that this is in alignment with that. And they're going to lock in together. You're going to press it down and it'll feel flat. If it feels lumpy or bumpy or you got a big dip in there, they're not locked. So it should feel very smooth. So go ahead and pin that one down. Then go to your next seam and lock it. Press it down to where it is lined up. Okay? And pin that down. Press it, then pin it all the way across. Then do your quarter inch seam. Open it up and take your next row and flip it over to the center row and do the same thing. Line up those seams, lock them in, pin them down, and stitch a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across. Okay? All right. Now you need to press your rows. So I've got these all stitched together now. So now you need to press each individual row. So, fold it into the center again. Take your iron and set the seam. Give it a burst of steam all the way across. Then, keep this row lifted a little bit and gently push against it. Don't stretch it and give it a burst of steam all the way across, okay? All the way across, okay. Now that you've got both rows pressed out, now you want to cut your, cor cut your corners at a 45 degree angle. So take your ruler and line it up and cut. Do that on all four corners. Now, you might be thinking, well, why didn't you just already have this cut and just sew a half square triangle in there? It's been my experience that when you're working with a bias cut, that they stretch out of shape as you're working with it. So I find that if I cut it after I've sewn them together, I get better results. Okay, so that's why I do it that way. Okay. Now you're going to layer your fabrics. You're going to take your backing fabric, which I just have this cream color, and then a, your layer of cotton batting, and then your nine patch. Okay? And just lay it out. You will notice that once you've laid it out, that your nine patch is smaller than your cotton batting and your backing fabric. It's supposed to be that way, okay? Because we will trim that off later because when you do your quilting stitches and you're working with it, sometimes the layers shift a little bit and if you cut this exactly what this measurement is before you do the quilting stitches, it might not come out very even. So do it after. So always cut it oversized. Now, I want to show you a technique for smoothing your layers out. So I start in the center and just gently glide it across. And then start in the center and go the other direction. And then start in the center again, go out. Always start center and work your way out. And do the same technique on the back because you want the back nice and uh, smooth also. All right, so after you've smoothed your layers, then you want to pin or baste your layers together so that everything holds together while you're doing your quilting stitches. 
I just use straight pins because it's the easiest for me and this is kind of small so just place straight pins all over if you have quilting safety pins you can use those or if you prefer to use a hand based through all your layers you can do that also so you have three choices there so just scatter everything out all over all right now we're gonna start our top stitching or the quilting stitches remember to use your walking foot when doing this if you don't have one I highly recommend you purchase one they are a wonderful pressure foot to use when doing any kind of quilting it's a wonderful little foot to use so I use it every day all right I'm going to take my ruler just so I can highlight how I've stitched across here okay if my cameraman could come in close to this row right here start in the center of your half square triangle and go to this corner and then up to this one and out to the center of the other side can you see that I hope you can then go over to the halfway point between here and the next corner and do another line and then go over to the corners and do it again and then at that halfway point all right then go to the other side and do the same thing then you're going to go in the opposite direction to where it crisscrosses do the same thing working your way out all right now you're going to trim your edges so lay your ruler along the edge of your nine patch take your rotary cutter and begin trimming off your edges and go to the next side and trim it and then the next side now obviously turn this table topper so it's in a good position for you to trim try not to reach across like I am here okay after you've trimmed it now you want to get your binding strips and make sure you've cut the selvage edges off of your binding strip don't use those sew the ends together and do a quarter inch seam press it open then fold the binding in half and press it the full length of the strip now you're going to start pinning the strip on the binding on now you have eight sides you can start on any section doesn't matter where you start but whatever you do don't start in a corner don't start here start somewhere in the middle then begin pinning it now you will notice when you come to these little corners you have a slight tuck that's okay it will be and it's fine it's, it'll work out just great so don't worry about it but if it's a big tuck you're, you're not placing it down properly continue pinning it all the way around until you come back to where you started overlap your binding by a half an inch then cut the binding off the excess off then take each end of the binding and open it up bring right sides together pin it together and do a quarter inch seam allowance finger press that seam open finish pinning it down okay then do your three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around and when you come to these corners remember that one thing you need to make sure you do leave your needle down press your foot up as you turn your table topper to go down the other side once you stitch it on from the front then flip it over onto the back and you're going to start pinning it onto the back make sure that the folded edge comes past the seam here and begin pinning it down now when you get into these corners here you're going to see that they are kind of a little it lifts up and it bubbles take a straight pin press down fold it over and then pin do that on all your corners okay then flip it over to the front and do stitch in the ditch and that's where two pieces of fabric come together 
you're going to stitch right up against the binding, not on it, but up against it. Make sure you use the same color of thread as your binding because then people won't notice that it doesn't match. And also it matches on the back there. When you come to your corners, remember what you need to do. Leave your needle down, press your foot up, and stitch all the way around. And then you're done. Let me show you some samples of other nine patch toppers that I've made. This is something I made many, many years ago when I was first learning how to quilt. It was so long ago I don't even remember what I, when I started. You will notice that my B block has a four patch in it. There's four pieces of fabric. And then in the center, I put half square triangles in there. So it is a nine patch design with a four patch in there. So you can do a lot with this. Let me show you another one. This one has an A fabric, a B fabric, and a C fabric. In the middle, I have green. Now my binding is a little different. This is scrappy patch binding. So if you want to know how to make this, watch my video, scrappy patch binding. One more I'm going to show you. This one I made for my kitchen. I have a very white kitchen. There's really no color in that kitchen. It's just white. So I decided to bring in a burst of color, some sunshine orange kind of feel. You'll notice that my B blocks is a nine patch. So you can do a nine patch within a nine patch. So this is my A fabric. It's a nine and a half inch square. These are three and a half inch squares and when you sew them all together they come out to a nine and a half inch size. So build your A, excuse me, build your B blocks first then build your rows. Okay, one more little item. My next video will be how to make piping and you use this on pillows a lot when making pillows. Also you'll see, even see it in clothing and I use it on many other crafting projects. So if you want to know how to make piping, watch that. Also watch the video bias cut binding because I use that a lot when making my piping. Okay, well I hope all that was helpful to you. To keep informed on all my future videos, click on subscribe. That's that big bold print word down at the bottom of the YouTube screen. Click on that. YouTube will ask you if you would like to receive an email notification. Click on yes enter your email address and the next time a new video comes out they send you an email with a big button in the center you click on that and it takes you directly to my latest video i'm cheryl i'm really glad you came to my sewing room see you next time and happy sewing